In this lecture, I want to say a little bit more about beliefs and credences. And to do that, I'm going to use an example from this very nice paper by Lara Bouchak called Beliefs, Credences, and Norms. So the credence in phi will be denoted by CR of phi. This is your graded belief or the measure of your belief of how likely you think that phi is true. And BEL of phi will be your full belief in phi. So you have three attitudes you could take towards phi. Either you believe phi, you disbelieve phi, so you believe the negation of phi, or you might suspend judgment about phi and neither believe phi nor its negation. What we're interested in in this lecture is the beliefs you might take towards chance propositions or propositions that include chance. So consider beliefs and credences in propositions of the form, there is a chance C that phi is true. So for example, you might believe that there is a 50% chance that the coin will land heads. Or you might believe that there's a 99% chance that my lottery ticket will lose. So I bought this lottery ticket, and you believe that the chance it will lose is 99%. Or you might say something like, there's a very low chance that this table will spontaneously combust. So the important I the idea here is that our credences and, and beliefs are being applied to propositions that talk about the chance that a certain event happens or does not happen. Now, the Lockean thesis is a bridge principle that connects your full beliefs and your credences. So the Lockean thesis says there's a threshold t between 0.5 and 1, such that for all phi, you believe phi if and only if your credence in phi is above that threshold. So for example, your threshold might be 0.75, and then you would believe any proposition that you assign a credence greater than 75%. There's also a way of connecting your chances to your credences. This is a chance credence thesis, sometimes called the principal principle. So what this says is, suppose that for any formula phi, you believe or you have good evidence that the chance, the objective chance of phi is in fact C. Then the question is, what credence should you attach to phi? Well, it's natural to assume if you have really good evidence that the chance of phi is C, then your credence in phi should be C. And this works out ni nicely when you think about some natural examples. Suppose you're flipping a fair coin. You know that the chance that the coin will land heads is 50%. So this gives you a reason to assign a credence of 50% that the coin will land heads. So your belief should be 50% that the coin will land heads. That's what your credence in the proposition the coin will land heads should be. So the question is, how do these two theses interact? So to study this, let's look at a famous example from the philosophy of law literature, the blue bus case. Suppose that it's late at night and an individual's car has been hit by a bus. Now, this individual cannot identify the specific bus, but she can establish that it is, in fact, a blue bus. And she can prove as well that 80% of the blue buses in the city are operated by the blue bus company, and that 20% are operated by the red bus company, and that there are no buses in the vicinity except for those operated by one of those two companies. Moreover, each of the other elements of the case, negligence, causation, and especially the fact and the extent of the injury, is either stipulated or established to a virtual certainty. So the only thing that's under consideration is whether or not this blue bus, so we've established that it's a blue bus, is operated by the blue bus company or by the red bus company. And we've established that 80% of the blue buses in the city 
are operated by the Blue Bus Company, while 20% are operated by the Red Bus Company. Now let's think about a variation of this case. So it's a similar case, but we're going to vary some of the details. So first of all, suppose that it's late at night, and then you have this individual's car that now is hit by a green bus. The two bus companies in the area, the green bus company and the yellow bus company, each operate 50% of the green buses. Now, there's an eyewitness who identifies the bus as belonging to the green bus company. The two bus companies operate buses with distinctive shapes. That's how the witness is able to identify that it operates from the green bus company as opposed to, say, the yellow bus company. So the bus is green. There's this eyewitness that says it is operated by the green bus company because it looks like one of those buses that the green bus companies operate. Now, it's nighttime, and so her vision is not ideal. And let's say she makes a mistake 25% of the time, and otherwise all elements of the case remain exactly the same. So let's summarize the situation. Let BB mean that a bus belonging to the blue bus company hit the woman in the first case. And let GB mean that a bus belonging to the green bus company hit the woman in the second case. Now, given the information that was provided in the two cases, the credence that the blue bus hit the woman in the first case is 80%. Why? Well, the, the chance that the blue bus company was operating the blue bus is 80%, because the blue bus company owns 80% of the buses in the region, and the red bus company uh, op uh, owns another 20%. So there is statistical evidence that most likely, or 80, there's an 80% chance that the blue bus company was the one operating the bus. And that's all the information you have. So your credence that this blue bus was operated by the blue bus company and hit the woman is 80% in the first case. In the second case, you have this eyewitness testimony. And the eyewitness testimony noted that the particular bus looked at the bus and said, ah, that bus is operated by the green bus company. But since it's night, this eyewitness is only correct 75% of the time. So your credence that it was the green bus company that hit the woman in the second case, and so they should be held liable, is 0.75. Now, I want you to think, if you were a juror in those two cases, would you convict the blue bus company in the first case, and would you convict the green bus company in the second case? So again, your credence that it was the blue bus company that was operating the blue bus that hit the woman is 80%. But that is simply because you just have prior information that the blue bus company owns 80% of the blue uh, buses in the region. Whereas in the second case, you have an eyewitness test testimony, and that eyewitness says, oh, it was that particular bus. I see that bus was owned by the green bus company. Now, the eyewitness testimony is, is only correct 75% of the time. So your credence that the green bus company hit the woman is 75%. Most people would argue, or at least the intuition here, is that it's only in the second case, the one with the lower credence, could the court judge the plaintiff has won the suit. That is, only in the second case do we hold the green bus company liable. In the first case, we don't. And to pump your intuitions a little bit more, imagine that you're in your classroom um, and you're there and you, you leave um, and there's two people. There's John and Jill. Those are the only two people in the room. Now, you leave your iPhone behind, you go out and you come back and you go to pick up your iPhone. Now, and you find that your iPhone's gone. 
Now, are you going to accuse John of taking your iPhone or Jill of taking your iPhone? There's nobody else in the room, so there's no eyewitness testimony. But suppose that you have some prior information. You just have some prior knowledge that there's a 10, 10, 10 times more likely that a man would steal a phone than a woman. So it's 10 times more likely, given this prior information, that it was John rather than Jill. Is that enough for you to blame John for taking the iPhone? Because that's the situation we are faced with in this first blue bus case. We just simply know that the bus company owns 80% of the blue buses in the region. Whereas in the second case, we have an eyewitness that sees a particular bus or identifies a particular bus as the one owned by the green bus company. What's interesting for us is that the credence that the blue bus was the one involved in the accident is greater than the credence you assign to the green bus being involved in the accident. And so this seems to suggest that the threshold view about the relationship between court verdicts and rational credences is false. It's just not the case that in order for you to convict somebody, to say that a company is liable for an accident, that that happens exactly when your credence is greater than a particular threshold. Because we're going to hold the green bus company liable, yet your credence that the green bus hit the woman is lower than in the first case. So this suggests, at least for when you're coming up with verdicts in court cases, when you're assigning blame to individuals, that the threshold view is wrong. So now here's a question for you. What does this say about the Lockean thesis? The Lockean thesis says you believe something, you fully believe something, if and only if you assign a credence above a particular threshold. So... Is the situation, suppose that your threshold is 0.775. So, you, so do you fully believe that the blue bus hit the woman, yet you don't want to assign blame? And you don't believe that the green bus hit the woman, yet you do want to assign blame in that case? So this is an interesting example, and this pulls at our intuitions about the Lockean thesis. And it raises the question, what exactly does this, is this threshold view about the relationship between credence and beliefs? Does that hold up?